Hey guys, welcome back to Surveying with Robert. So it's been a minute. I uh, gotta apologize to you for not getting more videos out, but I've been super busy with a lot of different things. So uh, this summer has been, whew, just crazy. So anyways, um, had some people ask me some questions about using a uh, R8S for a base and an R12 for a rover. I'm sure by now you guys have heard how well these R12s work. So the big question is, do I need an R12 as a base or can I use an R8S at the base? So first things first. Okay, so what I've got here behind me is I have an R10 and an R8S. My R8S is totally unlocked. Um, it's got all the features to it that, um, that you can unlock on it. So, and I've got my R12 here. Of course, it's totally unlocked. So what we're gonna do is, I've got both of these set on the same frequency. We're gonna set up a couple of survey styles and we're going to do what's called swap base. So with swap base, what happens is uh, I'm transmitting from both these base stations and then I swap between base stations to get, um, to get corrections, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to take that into the woods and see how well that works. So first thing we need to do is I need to go in and set up a couple of survey styles. I've already got uh, coordinates on both these points. So let's go into survey styles. Let's call it new. I'm gonna call this one an R12 survey style. Let me back up here. Function caps, R12, enter, accept. So we're only really looking, well, we're gonna do rover and base, I guess. Rover options um, would be, uh, let's go ahead and set this at an R12 internal, CMRX. Uh, antenna height is going to be two meters, bottom of quick release. Uh, station index, we're gonna call this one 12 for the R12, right? We're going to make sure that all of our satellites are turned on, okay? I'm gonna turn the tilt off, turn the X fill on. You guys know how I feel about that tilt. Uh, CMRX, R12, 6.562, uh, station index of 12, blah, blah, blah. Okay, accept. Um, rubber data link, we're going to use the radio. Base options. So for base options, we're going to go, um, in, let's see, first thing we're going to do is an R12. As soon as I find it, there it is, R12. Okay, we're using the, the lever... Um, I said R2. No, I want an R12. R12. I want the lever of the R12 extension. My height is two meters, so it's correcting up for um, the extension that I've got on there, the lever extension. So I'm just saying two meters for the pole, for the fixed height tripod, and then it knows what it is up to the phase center. So um, we're going to call this station index 12. There again for the R12. We're going to make sure everything is set up and it's good. There we go. So, um, base data link. We want to go receiver internal, accept. You know what? I need to go back to that rover options while I'm thinking about it. And I'm not going to put anything in here. I'm just gonna say any, and that way it's gonna prompt me for the station index. So let me make sure everything looks good, except store. Okay, so that is the um, R12 station index. So let's go new. Let's call this an R8S survey style, except um, rubber options. Uh, same thing, we're going to do R12, R12 internal, bottom of quick release. I don't really need to be messing with, uh, I, I don't really need all this in the rover, to be honest with you. Um, station index, I'm just going to go ahead and set it up anyways. 
because uh, all we're worried about is the base. We're not worried about the rover in this case. We could be using anything for a survey style on the rover side. Rover data link, yep, base options. So here we're going to choose R8S. There again, as soon as I find it, R6, R6. I always overlook that R8S. There it is, R8S internal. Bottom antenna mount, uh, we're at 2.25 meters. So station index, we're gonna call it eight. So we know which one's which. We're gonna make sure all of our satellites are turned on, except base data link. We're gonna to go to radio and we're gonna use receiver internal, except, um, let's store it. Okay, so I've got both survey styles set up. So now what we need to do is we need to start both base stations. So now I'm gonna to go to measure. I'm going to um, end the survey that I had a while ago. No. When I set these two points, measure. Let's go to R12, start base. So it's going to connect up to the R12 for the base station. Uh, except, wait a minute. Settings, this is where it gets confusing, by the way. Connections, Bluetooth, let's make sure. So I want. Uh, for the rover, I want to use R12. What am I using for a rover? Let me look. 0384. So 0384 is my rover. And for my base, I'm going to use that one, which is 0385. Except. Measure. Let's go to R12. Start base. Hmm. One and two. I think that's the way I did that. Hope so. Otherwise, my points are going to look really weird. Uh, number one, enter lever extension. Okay, this is the trick. We have to put a transmit delay in this thing. So what happens is, is the base is broadcasting, and it is broadcasting an offset, right? So one base is broadcasting at this time frame. This base is broadcasting at a different time frame. So what we have is we have signals going out, same frequency, but we have signals going out at a different rate. That's how this thing works. So if you've ever noticed down at the bottom where it says uh, transmit delay and ever wondered what that is, that's what it is. So I'll put the delay in this one, 250 milliseconds. Station index is 12, because it's the R12, right? Base started, okay. So let's hope that I'm doing the right point numbers. Let's look and see here. If I zoom, zoom, zoom. Um, yeah, it looks like number one was a 12 and number two was R8S. Whoo! Thought that screwed that one up. Okay, so that started. So now let's go to measure. Let's go to R8S. Let's start base. The antenna R8S internal defined in the survey style is incorrect for this. Oh, you know what? <sighs> Remember what I said about the Bluetooth being confusing? Oh my gosh, it's early, early in the morning. Bluetooth. So for this time for the base, I want to connect up to the R8S, except that's why it's giving me those problems. Measure, R8S, start base receiver. Okay, so we're starting R8S base. And the gnat's already out here this morning. Thought I was getting out here early. I could get away from all that stuff. Okay, so there's our 8S. <coughs> okay. <clears throat> Should be point number two. So point name, code, R8S. You know, if I'd looked at that a while ago, I'd have been able to see that. So my code is R8S, so I know I'm on the right point. Um, 7.382, so I've got the fixed height or the uh, 0.25 meter extension on it. Oh, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, no, I put the transmit delay in there. Measure, R8S, start base. I don't want to transmit delay on the R8S. I'm just doing a transmit delay. You'll only do a transmit delay on one of them. Um, so point number two, enter. Let's try this again, start. Base started. Okay, so we have the base started. So now 
I just have to pick which, uh, man, these gnats. Um, I just have to pick which base station I want whenever I do the swap base, okay? So uh, I'll show you real quick how it works and then we're gonna go off in the woods. So right now, if I said measure and I said, um, you know, I could, because I set up the rover on both of them, I can do either one. So if I said R8S and I say measure points, it should be connecting up to the R12 and the radio frequency should be, should be good. Because I called the R12 the rover for both of them. Okay, so now you can see I've got both of them and now they've built up. So now I have the eight and the 12 that I can choose from because I set the station index in there, right? So um, if I want to come off the eight, I can say I want to come off the eight starting survey okay so now i'm ready to store a point you can see um, i'm using the r12 as a base or no i'm sorry i'm using the r8 as a base i'm using the r12 as a rover and i'm seeing 26 satellites sitting here right now okay so if i say measure and i say swap base we're going to see so now i'm using the eight right as the um as my base station so now if i want to use the 12 as my base station it's going to switch bases it's got that transmit delay so it takes it a second or two to pick it up there it goes so now i got the 12 now i'm connected to the 12 as a base station okay so I can go back and forth between these two base stations. And the reason I'm doing this is, is I want to show you um, the difference in when I get into the woods between the R12 and the R8S, right? As far as using either one of them for a base station. I thought this was a good way. I could do both, right? I could show you how uh, to do the swap base, uh, which is good for, um, you know, some of the standards that we have uh, require us to shoot a point twice from two different base setups. Well, you can do it from two different base stations as well. And this works the same. I could have one of these connected to a network. I just have to end the survey to connect up. If you're using radio, I can do a swap base. But you'll notice right now I'm using the R12 and I have 27 satellites. If you look at the top of the screen. So if I go back and I say measure and I say swap base receivers, building base station data. So now if I want to go back to the eight, I'm going to switch back to the eight. Like I said, it takes it a second or two to switch over because of the information. So now I'm going back to the eight. You can see now I have 26 satellites, right? So it looks like with the R12, I picked up one more satellite versus the R8S. And that's probably because the R12, the antennas are a little bit more sensitive than they are in the R8. So now what we're going to do is um, we're going to take this thing into the woods and I'm going to get some shots and we're going to swap between base stations and see how well that works. Um, so let's go get in the tree. Yeah, in case you're wondering, it's definitely getting hot out here today. Okay, so we're back here in the deep dark timber and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go between the two different base stations. So uh, let's see where we're at right now. If I go to measure, I go to swap base. It says I'm on the eight. Let's go ahead and go to the 12. We're gonna switch over to the R12 for a base. Waiting for information from the base. Okay, so right now I'm coming off the R12 is what I'll call it. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to hit start, enter, measure. 
let's see how long it takes coming off the R12 to get a corrected position. I hate to say fixed position. You guys got on to me for that, right? Because the R12 doesn't fix or float. So, survey grade. Is that what you want to call it? So we're at 21 satellites. We're over a minute. Before I hit record on the camera, it was getting position less than a minute. Now that I turned the camera on to record it, it's taking longer. We're at about two minutes, 30 seconds. 20 satellites. Well, this is taking longer than planned. Usually it fixes a little quicker than this. Being slow for some reason right now. It's trying. It's almost there. There we go. Took the shot. Stop. About four minutes. So, which took a whole lot longer than I thought. About three minutes longer than I thought it was going to. But anyways, so now let's switch over. Let's go to measure. Let's go to swap base. That was a 12. Let's go to the 8. So... I'm going to reset my clock. Say R8S. I'm going to say point number 100. Yep. Measure. Start. Okay. Start the clock and see. Reset the satellites just before... I started on the uh, with the 12. That may be why it took longer for it to get its position because it looks like we're going to get it now pretty quick. Kind of what I was expecting. This is with the R8S actually, which is what that is supposed to say. There it is. Out of tolerance. Okay, that only took about 35 seconds. I think that's because I was already fixed from the R12. So we're gonna we're gonna check this. Okay, so as you can see on point number 100, there's my average. I've got a um, horizontal distance of 700, a vertical distance of 900. You can see that um, we're still fixed. Now that's coming off the R8S with the R12. Okay. Observation stored. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm going to go ahead. You can look at the residuals here. You can see it's pretty good considering I'm in the woods, right? So let's do 101. We're going to say R8S, except this time what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the initialization. So I'm going to go to measure. I'm going to go to RTK initialization. I'm going to tell it to reset the satellite tracking, which is what I had done with the R12 beforehand. Waiting for satellite. Okay, so now let's... Um, Give it a second to find some satellites. Let's hit measure. I'm going to hit reset and start. So that was 35 seconds a minute ago, but I think I was cheating. So now let's see how long it takes. Because it took four minutes with the R12, and I think that's because I reset the satellites. But did you notice the residuals between the two points? That's the only way you can check between two points I mean we're doing the ultimate check right I've got two base stations set up and I'm shooting the point from each base station in here so I mean there's no doubt those points are correct you could traverse in here all day long if you wanted to but that that tells me all I need to know I'd put my stamp on it let's put that away so that's what I figured I reset the satellite so it's taking a while for it to come back down Yep, we're one minute right now. She's working her way back down. That's what it was. That's the reason it was four minutes while ago was because on the R12 because I had just reset the satellites and I didn't do that with the R8S. So coming off the R8S, I did that. Yeah, I did it with the R12, not the R8S. So here we go. We're trying it. Down to foot. A little over two minutes. Looks like it's going to be the same things it was with the R12. 
four minutes though if you reset the satellite so i mean that's not nothing to sneeze at is it back here in the woods i'd stand here for four minutes to get a shot rather than traverse in especially if i know i can trust the point we're almost there i say that as the numbers go up three minutes and two seconds is how long that one took okay now then, let's swap base again. Swap base. Okay, all that was with the R8. Now we're going to go to the R12. Okay. Waiting for information from the base. R12. Enter. Measure. Start the timer. See what we get. More precisions. You know what? Dang it. I was going to shoot that as 101 so we could see what it was. Let me, let me stop this. Phantom point. I'm going to stop the clock. I'm going to reset the clock. I'm going to go back to 101. Enter. Yes. Measure, start. I may be cheating a little bit, but I wanted to see what the difference was between the two. She's fixing to go. There it is. Out of tolerance. Stop. Okay, so 30 seconds is how long it took. So basically, what we're looking at here is if you reset the if I reset the satellites, it's going to take me three to four minutes to get initialization if I um, go to take a second shot right it's about 30 seconds or so 30 seconds to a minute and that's what I was seeing a while ago about 30 seconds to a minute let me uh, stop that so that uh, I can put that on the video for you so anyways um, the other thing I might want to point out is the fact that we've got uh, our vertical distance is 11 hundredths between the two shots and a horizontal distance is 900. So, um, considering where we're at, that's pretty dead burn good. So, um, moral to the story is R8S base totally unlocked with an R12. My opinion works about the same, doesn't it? Um, we're seeing kind of the same. Everything I do seems to be the same no matter what. So, can I use an R8S with an R12? Absolutely. R8S base base only mode unlock all the satellites now you got to get triple frequency in order to get the l5 so that's going to cost you uh thirty five hundred dollars to upgrade that um and then if you want the galileo and um Beju, i think it is those two that's an additional thousand dollars so if you take a traditional r8s base and you totally unlock it with all the satellites, you're looking at spending about $4,500. But add $4,500 to, you're still at 18, 19,000, I think. Um, what is it, 14, two, I think, for a base only R8S. Add another $4,500 to it, that's what you've got. Um, you know, and I mean, that's what's so nice about the R8S is because it's scalable. So I can, if I have an R8S base already right now, I can upgrade it. And what prompted me to do this is I've got a customer that was asking me that question, if he could just upgrade what he has. He's running a uh, R8 Model 2 as a rover and R8S as a base. And he's hearing all these stories about these R12s. So he wanted to, um, he wanted to know if if I unlocked his R8S, if his R12 would work. So I thought this was a great way to prove it, right? So anyways, um, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, man, like and subscribe. Uh, we're up to about 3,600 subscribers so far. So we're doing pretty good. Um, I really appreciate you guys watching. And as always, God bless and be safe and love you guys. Really appreciate the support. On this channel i've got some really good stuff planned in the future uh, unfortunately i'm not able to get these videos out as fast as i'd like to because as you know it's not that easy when you're trepsing through the woods and setting base stations up and trying to record it all and everything else right so guys god bless like and subscribe love you guys keep watching
see you in the next one. Be safe. Observation stored.